Okay, um, I believe uh, we can start. Uh, the other guys would uh, join us as we proceed. This session is going to be recorded so that uh, the other guys in the group can actually uh, play this recording at a later time and follow through. Uh, hopefully it will be helpful. The beauty of participating in such a session is if you have uh, questions, you can ask them and we can discuss further. And like when you're going through the recording um, by yourself. Uh, so uh, I encourage you guys to continue participating uh, by joining the sessions. So today, what you're going to do is basically do, uh, we are going to look at how you can, uh, it, you, how to process text with the intent of uh, predicting, building a classifier. So classifier is basically an output. Uh, the output is one of uh, many categories uh, and it's known, supervised learning. And uh, in this case, it's going to be a, a binary classifier, meaning it's uh, the output is one of two. There are instances where you have uh, uh, several outputs. For example, if it's a, a IT help desk where you want to predict uh, the likelihood of the category uh, a certain incident uh, falls in, you could have uh, IT software, IT hardware, database, it could be monitor, it could be a mouse. So depending on this, the sentence or the email, uh, you could classify the message as one of those many. So today we'll look at just binary and the output is two, and in particular it's sentiment analysis. So I, I got data from the internet. This is uh, readily available data from one, a certain GitHub account. Uh, I'll share all those details at the end. And we'll walk through a very, very basic classifier. The main reason I start from basic is because uh, there are several ways of solving a sentiment analysis including complex uh, algorithm, like you can even build a neural net um, to, to do the same thing, because uh, you can build a, a neural net uh, classifier. So since this is just uh, for foundations, we'll start from the very, very basic and see the elements within which you, you'll type to see uh, the final output. And in particular, we will import the, all the necessary libraries after importing all the necessary library, we will definitely import the data into a data frame, uh, explore the data uh, using um, the available data frame uh, functions like head, tail, sample, info. And then uh, we might want to check if the titles or the headings of that data frame to are, uh, if, they, if there is any need to, to change or to rename the column titles. Yeah, and then we'll also do, um, uh, we'll also check if the, 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 the categories and the classes are balanced. So if they're not balanced, what would, what, what would that mean? And if uh, they're balanced, what would that mean? And what are the implications? So that one we'll just discuss, uh, but for the coding, it will be for future. We'll handle imbalance statements uh, future, in future sessions. We'll also look at some of the cleaning um, requirements. When you're, when you're dealing with text, there's several requirements for you. To, you need to clean that text data. So we look at that as well, uh, and how to apply, uh, generally to clean your, 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 your text. And then um, we'll, do, we'll look at a very, very basic, uh, most of the guys in this class have already uh, attended some of my sessions where I explain the encoding techniques. So in this particular one, um, we will use, uh, in this particular one, we will use uh, uh, factorize, uh, but there are several encoding techniques. Uh, those sessions are not recorded, but uh, if you want a revisit, you can always engage me. We could always create a class that is recorded for the sake of any other person. After that, we will look at how to generate features. Um, in previous sessions, especially the foundation, I explained uh, what we mean by features. So features are equivalent or syn synonymous to independent variable. And uh, if we remember in our previous class, independent variables are those that are used um, uh, to determine uh, the output. And in this case, the output we refer to as the target variable. So if you have uh, 
variables or the columns that are used to determine the output, those are become those then becomes independent variables. But now we are, we are working with text um, text uh, data. We will have to generate those features because all we have is a column, a single column, which is text. So from that text, can we are we able to generate features and use them as independent variables? I'll explain that and probably um, go through a few concepts while, uh, as we do that. And then we'll also, um, uh, we then we'll ne we'll then need to. I'll show you guys how to um, use uh, linear SVC. Uh, I chose linear SVC as uh, one of the classifiers, but we have several classifiers. You can you can actually use multinomial and B. You can use random forest, logistic regression. Um, my 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 choice uh, for no whatever reason was linear SVC. Um, there are ways of determining which of the available classifiers to use, where you put them together and the best performing one, you pick it up. Yeah. So there are ways, but we won't cover that today. Um, so we'll just go to how, how to build a classifier using uh, linear SVC. We will train the, um, the, the classifier, the algorithm, and uh, generate a model. Yeah. Um, once we use the model, we will make predictions and uh, generate a classification report. We get to understand what a classification report is and uh, what uh, the importance of the classification report. We'll also look at the confusion matrix and interpret it. And then finally, we'll do tests where we give uh, sample messages and we determine whether they are the, of positive or negative sentiment or whether they have misfired. So. Um, if, it, if we misfire on today's session, the better, because the misfires will then build up on a subsequent session where we, we look at what other thing can we do so that we address these um, misfires. Because uh, definitely when you're doing your model, the first time it will not uh, be accurate, especially when you take it to uh, out of sample test data. Out of sample test data is test data that the, the um, the model has never seen before. So that is the best way to test your, your model. Take it outside there and let people play around with it. So uh, this model, as it is, we could actually deploy it to production and guys, guys to play with it on, on either an Android app or even um, a, a website. And maybe I would, I would do this at my free time and let you guys know, right? So that is, uh, by and large, the, the scope of what you're going to do today. And I've started with the uh, libraries. So I'm hoping that you guys will follow through as I type. If you have a question, after every cell, uh, I'll, I'll take a pause and then just take questions. If I'm typing so fast um, or I'm moving so fast, please let me know. Some people say I type so fast, but I highly doubt. So most of you guys will. Uh, are better type typist than I am. As PD, so we will need uh, pandas. We will also need. I've already started typing. So um, if you are not able to see my screen, please let me know. If you are not able to hear me, please let me know. Miss Yende Tekeangu, I believe uh, we are good. I need one person to confirm if you are good, Carol. Yes, we are good. Okay. All right. Perfect. So I'm um, importing NumPy as NP. Uh, uh, importing NumPy as NP. And then uh, because of data cleaning, data cleaning imports, there is a library called Beautiful Soap uh, from Beautiful Soap for import Beautiful. So, and then there is RE. RE is regular expressions. And then the next one we will import is, uh, though we will not cover it today, uh, we need, uh, we will cover, there is a way of uh, bundling this into a pipeline and uh, uh, modeling from a pipeline. So that would form our discussion in the next class so that you get to appreciate uh, 
the difference between working using a pipeline and working without using a pipeline. So for today, we won't use a pipeline. Uh, so in this case, I mentioned we will use, uh, uh, we, we are going to use uh, from uh, linear SVC. So from SKLAN dot SVM imports linear SVC. And then um, testing, we have to do testing libraries from scaleland dot model selection import train test split. Um, that is going to help us uh, split our our data. I will explain. Um, this is just actually to for us guys to use the same same data set as our training set and, and, and test set. For us guys to be able to um, uh, validate and measure the performance of our, our model uh, through uh, the metrics that are available. Uh, some of the metrics that are available from SKLAN that metrics imports. I had mentioned them classification report uh, we also have accuracy score we also have precision yeah uh, there are several classification metrics um, precision score um, recall recall score precision score recall score F1 score, I'll explain um, each one of them. And the confusion matrix. Confusion matrix. Um, so uh, this is how we are going to do it. Uh, we are not so many. Uh, so if uh, that, is, that, that is all the libraries you're going to use for today. So after, after typing that, you just need to press Alt Enter. We have an error. Let's see what's the error. I cannot import linear. There, the spelling is not correct. I. You press Alt Enter, and then you will uh, run the cell. That is to run the cell. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a pause there for just to confirm everyone uh, we're on the same page. If you are done, uh, I need you to do something. Just go to chat and then uh, type done. We are eight guys, so I'm expecting eight dance. So once you've, com you've completed uh, done, you've completed typing, just key in done. If you're not typing and uh, you just need me to proceed, you can go ahead and just uh, type done so that I know we are on the same page and we move forward. That is the tab for importing libraries. Are you bought after recall score? Okay, let me just put it uh, the next, but I'll return it. Recall, recall score, or alternative way I could do this. You can see now, yes? Yes. Let me do this. It will be visible. So I'm waiting for the dance. Uh, in case you, in case you just joined us. So just in case you joined us, we've just uh, we haven't gone so far. We've uh, 
this is our first cell where we've imported the libraries and the library required uh, so far are as what is displayed on the screen. Let me maximize this for just easier visibility. I hope you guys can see it better now. Okay, um, so in case, uh, in case uh, I'm moving so fast, please let me know uh, so that I can pause. I'll, I'll proceed as we see the, the dance, the dance are for cell one. Uh, so the next cell, cell number three, is uh, how we import uh, the Excel sheet. Importing, importing the data into an Excel sheet, into a data frame, into a data frame from the Excel sheet. Then here we are just, uh, cell number four, exploring the data set using sample, okay. Oh, okay. Mark, Mark, uh, uh, I've, I've paused. Just let us know once you're done. So the guys who've joined us, um, uh, just type, uh, open your Jupyter notebook and uh, type cell one, uh, sorry, cell two. That is our first cell. Uh, those are the required libraries that we are going to, to use. So, um, Beautiful soap is a library as the other type. Let me just go through what what is displayed in cell one. Beautiful soap is a library that is used uh, to clean data, um, uh, especially removing HTML characters and other 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 characters that you might not need um, when when doing an LP task. And then RE is regular expression. It's also a library that helps in uh, filtering certain um, characters or even uh, uh, within the within your, your text. We, we are going to use that. Linear SBC is one of the algorithm, actually the, the algorithm you're going to use. There are several algorithms you can use in NLP. You can use random forest, you can use multinomial NB, you can use logistic regression. Um, uh, so I picked a linear SVC, uh, not for any particular reason, but uh, as a guide, there are techniques within which you can put all those algorithms into one and then uh, push the data set to all of them and, 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 and get each one of them to, to give you results. Um, out of the results, you pick the one that gives you the best results uh, to proceed with. So those techniques are other techniques you can use as a justification in picking which algorithm as compared to the others. Um, then uh, the testing library, we have a train test uh, split, uh, where we will use this to, to split the data. Um, the data set we have, there is need for us guys to split it in, into two sets. There are instances where you split the data set into three sets. Uh, today we are going to look at uh, splitting it into two sets, and one for training and the other one for testing. So training is the data set you'll expose to the algorithm when you're building the model. And uh, once the algorithm, um, uh, 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 the algorithm will then use its statistical and uh, mathematical techniques to get and understand or extract specific unique patterns in that data. And then um, to enable you, it's basically learning. It's learning that data to enable you to do prediction. Once it has learned uh, that data, uh, you will use now the test data set to make predictions. And when you make the predictions, then now you use evaluation metrics 
uh, to evaluate how the, those predictions uh, how those predictions perform. Uh, some of the metrics that we are going to cover, uh, we have classification report, accuracy score, precision score, recall score, F1 score, and confusion matrix. The reason why I've imported them in one line uh, is for visibility, but you can put all of them in a single line. It doesn't um, need to be in this way. I want you guys to, to see as you type. So those are the things that the library we are going to use. Uh, cell number three is for importing uh, the data set. And then um, uh, when you're importing or working data set, remember Pandas enables you to work with data set from several data sources. Uh, one of them is CSV. Uh, there are others that are even, you can even read from Excel sheets. Uh, you can read from uh, tab TSV. Uh, you can read from the database uh, directly by providing uh, database connections. That is uh, MySQL, Postgres, or whichever data source. So there are so many data sources that you can use. For today, we're going to read from CSV. And this forms the benchmark or the base within which you can advance our discussions. How do we connect to database? The next time, can we connect to the database? The next time, can we connect to whatever data source that we have. And I'm hoping that through our sessions, one day we'll be, we'll be talking about uh, uh, streaming. Uh, and streaming, we now use big data techniques. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, exploring data sets. Yes. Yes, is that Dennis? I think, uh, Dennis, I can't hear you well. Okay. All right, cell number four, we sample it, and then we can now go to the next cell. Now, um, let's take note of something. Uh, this column, it has special characters. It has, it's funny, yeah? So once in a while, you might come across, uh, Oh, okay. Uh, Dennis' data set was shared on WhatsApp group. Just check the WhatsApp group and download it from there. Uh, so there are instances where you might want to rename the, the, your columns. And uh, this is normally very, very helpful because it will reach a time when you're trying to make reference to a certain uh, column, but you don't, it doesn't return results. So if you don't do data in, that, datadf.info, you might be wondering why. So a column name like this one, how would, you, how would you specify this? So the good thing, the only thing you can do there is to name, uh, to rename. Um, so the command to rename, the first thing we need to do is to create a rename dictionary. And if you want to rename everything, uh, you specify uh, the first column there. So the first one we want to rename, this is what you want to rename. Uh, you, you, you paste that there. We want to rename it to um, the sentiment. Yeah? And then uh, the second one you want to rename is sentiment, sentiment text. We want to rename it to message. So that is our rename dictionary. Now we want to rename uh, those columns. So we specify uh, data frame the df dot rename. And then we pass which columns when you're renaming columns equals to you, 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 you pass the rename dictionary. And then there's a command here in place equals to true. Yeah. So this one is like committing the changes so that moving forward from this cell moving forward, uh, the data frame will always make reference to the new column names. Yeah. After, 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 after renaming, um, you might want to confirm that a DF, uh, that sample. Let's confirm with those two. You see the names have been renamed, but our interest is uh, we are not interested in this. Uh, this is uh, probably added by mistake. So you might want to specify uh, the, the columns that you want. And the way to do that, let's just use the same, the same cell. 
We'll do data frame, data df. So this is what is called a filter. You want specific column. Now we have renamed our columns. We just want sentiment and we want message. And then after that, we do df sample two. There we go. You've removed the columns. Okay. So we, we might want to, to check out, we might want to check out uh, how is this data balanced. Um, so balance of the data we check by doing value counts. Um, so we could pick say the sentiment, sentiment dot value counts. So we have 20,887 uh, having sentiment one, 19,007 uh, having, um, having uh, sentiment zero. So if we come here and explore, we have zero looking at kitties that need to be adopted, blah, blah, blah. Oh, well, we shall, I love, I love rock. So we would assume one is a positive sentiment and uh, zero is a negative if you look at sucks so zero is a negative yeah so uh, zero is negative and one is positive so this is pretty much balanced yeah so the thing we are going to do right now this will take a bit of time uh, for us guys uh, to do but we are going to create a function that would help us in cleaning yeah cleaning function so in Python, uh, functions you create by starting the cleaning. <sighs> Let's call it cleaning. And then in this function, you're going to pass a message. We're going to pass a message. So function, um, that is how you start a function. So the message that we're going to pass is this column. I'll show you after creating the function. So when you press on enter, it takes you to uh, a tab. Now there is a library we need to import NLTK within the, the function. So once it imports that, we first need to remove, this first step is remove HTML. So we say HTML text equals to, remember we had, we had uh, imported beautiful soup. Uh, we are passing the same message and then we are using HTML dot parser, yeah? And then we use dot get text. So um, let me just explain uh, uh, something about uh, this get text. It's after pu pushing that parser, it returns to you the text without, uh, uh, it, 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 it returns to you the text without the HTML. So you've re, you will have removed the HTML from it. Yeah, maybe you scrapped uh, a website and it had some HTML tags. So beautiful parser helps you remove those. Step two, remove none letters. Yeah, so um, the way to do that, let me say uh, letters. We want letters, in this case we are using regex, uh, re, regular expression. So a uh, regular expression is a very expansive uh, function, but a very, very important one. Uh, you could spend some time just to understand how, how it works. Uh, give me a few minutes. Uh, let me, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Uh, just give me a few minutes. I need to address something. Uh, okay. Um, I think we will proceed uh, and you guys are typing. Uh, so regular expression is something you can actually explore, but for, for, for this class, uh, allow me just to, to move forward um, with uh, actually, um, let me just type. Yeah, so um, let me copy. So you pass the pattern, and then um, 
the string that you want to replace it with, any pattern that is not within uh, the specified pattern, and then you pass uh, where to get that that text from. So the text that has been, we, in this statement, we've removed uh, HTML. We are left with some text here. So this is the text that you move with to the next one. And in this text, you're, you're telling your, your function that uh, from this text, I only want this, any other thing, replace with blank, yeah? And then uh, we could, we could uh, copy the same. If you want to include the uh, digits, um, this is what you would use. So it's good to, uh, to understand uh, the specifics uh, for the pattern. You don't need to use all of them, yeah? So um, there are instances where I'll just give you uh, some. Uh, there are different, um, there are different uh, regular expressions that you can use. Um, so this one is highly, there is a meaning for, for each of these. Yeah. Um, and you can now, uh, what is it called? You, it's like you're consolidating after removing this or uh, allowing only this, move to the next and uh, Anything that has a space with a, a sub-prefix sub of a plus, uh, replace it or uh, replace it with the space. Um, new line, carriage return, uh, only letters. So I'll, let me just put all of them here. So when you're revising, you'll get to understand uh, which function does what. So in this case, uh, we might want to, uh, Disable that, or disable that because it's more or less uh, duplicate. Uh, this is just allowing uh, any character A to Z, both uppercase and lowercase, including one and nine. Uh, you may not need that. This is a new line, so you're replacing it with nothing. Uh, this one is replace. Carriage return is enter, and then this one is uh, you don't want uh, numbers. To, you, you want numbers to be stripped off. And then this one is backslash. This one, sorry, this one is a, a single quote. This one is a double quote. So um, depending on what you want to, what you want to, to be done, that is how you build up, yeah? So here you're replacing a, a single quote with nothing. It could be nothing or space. Uh, this one is single quote with nothing. A zero to nine, the numbers you're replacing with nothing. Uh, current return, you're replacing with nothing. New line, we're replacing with nothing. Okay, so that forms our uh, second step where you're looking at uh, characters. Number three, remove any um, email characters, like special characters. Excuse me? Yes. Can you hand it to in the chat? We, we don't have those symbols, like some like, that's facing. Oh, that I one. paste them on the chat, eh? okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, I was actually carried away. I could not see the, the chat. I'm seeing you guys have tried reaching out. Let me paste it. Uh, so in chat, you guys can, those are the symbols. You can paste them. Actually, that is faster. And then uh, someone is also asking uh, importation. Share the share on the chat. Um, can I paste the entire function for uh, the cleaning? You guys can go through it. Yeah, uh, that's me, okay. Okay. Yeah. Let me finish. Let me finish this, and then uh, I'm going to share. Uh, So remove special characters and others. So we have that and then another one. So you guys can paste. And then um, the next one is to before 
make this tree lower case. Yeah. And then uh, we, in our previous class, we covered tokenization, the, the steps for when you're handling uh, an NLP problem, when you're solving an NLP problem. The first thing we normally do is tokenize the data. That is a command. Since we had imported this NLTK, we tokenize uh, the letters. And then uh, there are other things like handling stop words uh, uh, and removing the stop words and actually stemming. What I would take you, I'll, I'll give you guys as a take home. Um, using uh, this function, can you edit this function to handle tokenization as well, as, to handle uh, stemming as well as, uh, as well as removing of stop words. So um, I know there is, uh, let me put this, add code that will uh, remove stop words. I think it's in our slide where we covered the uh, in our previous slide, the video, if you go back to the video you play it, you'll see the, the code for the uh, handling stop words. So you can just go back and plug it in here. And uh, if it's still not so clear, you could uh, do research and do that. But the function would still work even without removing the stop words. But um, removing stop words might have uh, improvements in the performance. And then add seven, add code that will do stemming, yeah? Okay, and then finally, I will return the, return the eight, return the clean data. So you do return, since this is string, you add a space, and then you join all, because we are the, we are tokenized. Um, join tokens, we are tokenized, so we are joining all the tokens that have been generated. That is our function. So what I'll do, I'm going to copy this function. Uh, the gaps become your assignment or rather take home. You just go and read and, uh, go and read and uh, figure out. I'm pasting this in the in the in the chat section. There you go. So copy that, copy the function in the chat and paste it in a single cell, and then you run the cell. Um, running it, the cell is you can either use the run or alt enter. Alt enter just creates another cell uh, for you. Uh, it takes the cursor to the next cell for you to <coughs> to start typing. Okay, so we have our functions for cleaning. How do we then use, uh, how do we then uh, do the cleaning? So this is our, our data frame. Remember our data frame, when you come here, you will see that our data frame has only two columns, the sentiment and the message. So we want to create a new, a new, a new column. We call it clean, cleaned message. Yeah, so in this new column, we are going to return. First of all, we are going to, to check in the, in the data, data DF. Yeah, we're going to check in the message column, we want to apply. We want to apply the function. And the function that we are applying is called cleaning. So, for each of these, what this uh, does is for each of the, for each of the entries in this column, uh, apply cleaning. So it will come for each of this record, like it will come here, pick this, and then it applies cleaning and then goes to the next. So it will be iterating for each of them. So it's a simple and very, very short, short way. The, the method you're calling is cleaning here and you pass the message, yeah? So that is how you call it, cleaning. And then you might want to check um this let me copy that 
dot sample five. So our cleaning has started. So when you run the cell, it will take some time. Uh, the cleaning is started for each record it's going through. And then we will see um, the output, the final output. It will have a, a new column called clean message. And then uh, it will have uh, the message in that column without certain characters uh, we'll just validate that because those characters are uh, we don't need those those are things that uh, makes a prediction difficult or it's uh, uh, become a nightmare okay right the cleaner is is done so what happens is um this data frame previously had two columns but right now we have clean message as you can see this one had a hash here. This one does not have hash. So special characters have been removed. This one is a Twitter handle at Anna underscore XO that has been stripped off. Yeah. Uh, there is this 93. It, because we had included uh, numbers to be removed, it is no longer there. Yeah. So that is how you that is how you apply you apply cleaning. So if you want, if you if you look at this uh, cell and realize that there is something else that you want to strip off. Uh, for instance, if you wanted to, uh, I don't know, you, you, you might want to, in this case, uh, you might want to, uh, we, are not, we are not removed stop words, so you might want to add the column here for stop words and come and check uh, when I add stop words, what has been removed. Yeah? So there, we are, there are two guys having a problem with installing this guy. Other library I could use. Um, Josephine, what is? Oh yeah, you've gotten the answer. Uh, the answer has been provided by Dennis. Yeah, Josephine, you've seen on the chat message. Dennis just provided you an, an alternative. Uh, are we together? Just for okay. Yes, it's working. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Good stuff, Dino. Um, okay. Uh, and then, uh, so those 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 special characters have been removed. We have our t our 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 clean uh, data set. Okay. Okay. Um, so what happens is. Uh, the next thing is, uh, since this, this process is not normally necessary, but I'm going to, uh, uh, especially in this case, where we have one and zero, because it's already been encoded, but assuming it was, um, it was uh, happy and sad, or positive and negative. So one being uh, positive, or uh, zero being uh, negative, in, 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 in text format, then there will be need for us guys to encode. So if we encode that, and because we wanted to, um, there'll be need for us guys to do a prediction. Um, I opted to one not, one not encode them. The results are the same, and this is how you do it. Uh, uh, factorize. Um, there is uh, the pandas method called factorize, it helps you to encode your text. So if it was, again, this is not necessary because they, we are already in one and zero, but uh, if, it, if it was uh, positive and negative, then this would come in handy. And uh, when we'll be doing prediction, I'll need to use this. This factorize, it returns, um, we, want to, we, want to, we want to put the, this function here, what it does, you can extract certain values from this function and put them in a, in a in a data frame. In this case, we want the output. If uh, positive is one, the sentiment ID. Yeah. So we are storing that output as a sentiment ID, and then we also have some mappings. So we will use this mapping to extract the exact text from our prediction. I'll I'll show you. I'll come back to that. So when we do that, um, I'm hoping you guys can type uh, in, in order. So um, this is a new column that we've added that is going to hey. store. Sorry, yes? Excuse me. 
Yes. Uh, the 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 line for the um to apply that that method. This one. I think I missed something. Cleaning. No. Mm -hmm. Yes, for cleaning. Okay. Just some. All right, it's okay. Just confirm. So as she types, that line is uh, uh, line 12. It's actually looking at each text in the message column of our data frame and applying the cleaning functions that we are done. In cleaning, we are removing, we are removing uh, special characters. If you don't want numbers, we remove the numbers. If you don't want uh, HTML, we remove the HTML. Even in that function, we can add stemming, we can add, uh, we can do tokenization. So after that, we are ready to, it's just a few more steps and we are ready to start our model. Uh, are you? Yes. Uh, as she types, uh, the sentiment, uh, the data frame. Yes. It, it's marked one zero, one zero, one zero. It's just that a marking or a, uh, Okay, so you may explain, but you explain, but does it represent anything? Yes, yes, it, it represents uh, the meaning. So in this case, one means uh, positive sentiment, zero means negative, if I'm not wrong. Uh, I, I want to scroll, but let's let, let Carol type. Um, if you scroll up and just skim through some of the text, you'll realize that uh, um, there are some words. You can actually open the Excel sheet and just explore some of the words uh, with one means uh, positive, zero means negative. Like, check out the one that I've highlighted right now. We could say this one. This is probably a positive statement. And this one is probably a positive statement. Yeah, according to this, the person who created this uh, data set, this is a positive statement. Yeah, so zero is negative. Do you know that makes sense? It makes sense. I was just hard to come up with one and zero. Sorry, I missed out. Then I can I, I didn't hear you. Just repeat. Hello, Deno. Uh the line. Oh, uh, okay, let me confirm Carol first and then they know we'll get back to you. Carol, have you typed the, are you now okay? I actually, that line is perfect. I typed correctly. Okay. Unfortunately, it gives an error. Okay. The What's previous, the, um, the, the, the function, mm, the function uh, worked correctly. Yeah. But that uh, applying the cleaning uh, function is the one that is bringing an error. What's what's the error? What error are you getting? Mm -hmm. uh, resource uh, P U N K T not found. I can also see Josephine. Uh, Josephine has said the same on the chart. Okay. P U N K T. Not yes. found. Uh, your NLTK uh, installed uh, correctly. I'm assuming. I'm also assuming because the the the, the cell that has it one for cleaning ran uh, ran correctly. Oh, okay. For 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 cleaning, it can run correctly because you're not executing mm -hmm. the exact. Uh, you're not executing the exact uh, function. So when you're executing the, okay. the, the function is when uh, it's, it brings those problems. Okay, so it could be it. Okay, uh, 
Uh, let's let's add these functions. Tell me if you can. I've pasted. Uh, I've pasted, but even my cell has run without those functions. Okay, just give me a minute. There is someone else who said renaming columns. Uh, oh, that is that. When you run this, is when you're getting that problem, huh? Okay. Not that one. When you run this one. Then cell 12, yes. Cell 12. Is when you're getting mm -hmm. that problem. Yes. Uh, what could it be? Uh, okay, try and do this um, as a function. Yeah, Josephine has, Josephine, yeah, perfect. Thanks, Josephine. That is the exact thing you need to add. So that worked, huh? P-U-N-K-T. Okay. Just add that. Let me also amend it here. PUNKT. What is the importance of the punct? What tokenization? It's a library within uh, an MTK. Okay, there's someone else who asked a certain question. Uh, could you please show how you rename the column? Uh, Devi, um, let me see. Uh, Devi, uh, cell number six, can you see it? Yeah, I've seen it. Uh, you're good now? Yeah, thank you. Okay, perfect. All right, uh, Carol, has your code worked? After It's adding running. The it's running, yeah? Okay. Let me, yeah, yeah yes. Mm. Okay. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Josephine, for that. Um, uh, huh. So where were we? Okay. I believe we are, we are, uh, we've done the cleaning. Cell 12 is done. Cell 13. So on cell 13, we are basically, uh, though not necessary for this specific example, but should you be, in, should you encounter the, should you encounter instances where your target variable, in this case, the sentiment is in string, you might want to, to encode them. Uh, main reason uh, to extract the mappings as well as to get the category ID, especially when you have several classes. You see this, this one, you have only two classes. So using zero and one is okay. As I had explained earlier, there are instances where you use several classes. Uh, uh, so the, the, the prediction is one out of many classes. Yeah? I give an example of a uh, help desk system where you, you, the, the email that is coming through is either a hardware or a software problem. Is it a database problem? So depending on the email that comes through, you might want to push that email to a specific um, uh, workflow. So there is need for you to classify the email. So you classify and then expose it to a workflow. Okay, another reason why I've done this is uh, for extracting the exact value. Uh, like now the exact value, which is either one or zero, we'll need to, uh, to generate and uh, have these uh, sentiment mappings. And these are outputs from this factorized method. Yeah, okay. So um, uh, that factorized method gives you that. Once you've done your cleaning, uh, you've done your encoding. Yeah. The next thing we need to do, um, this is where the G starts. Uh, we need to, we have the text, but 
machines do not understand uh, uh, text. So there is something called TF-IDF. TF-IDF is uh, term frequency, inverse document frequency. And what this does is it's a function, it's actually a statistical function um, that uh, checks out the terms uh, within a document. And a document in this case is a message, a single message like this one. So if this was a long message, yeah, if this was a long message and we want to do, and you've already done, uh, what is it called? You've already done, you've removed the stop words. Now you want to look at the specific terms that are not stop words and you've removed all the characters, special characters. We are actually looking at this cell, yeah? So uh, this word, blimey, it could be someone's name. Uh, it could mean that it is blind, uh, descriptive. Uh, this word, quick. Uh, so how many, how many, what is the frequency of this value within a document? Yeah, how many times does it appear in that uh, uh, document? Inverse document frequency is there are certain stop words, especially if, excuse me, if you don't remove stop words, uh, there are certain stop words that could, could appear several times and they might confuse the model that it is of importance yet. Those are stop words and uh, it's actually not of importance, especially when you, when you, when you don't remove stop words because there are instances where removing stop words could work, uh, not removing stop words could also work. Uh, so stop words is not something that you just remove by default. Um, so inverse, inverse uh, document frequency, what this helps with is it reduces the impact of uh, uh, less important words on the determination of the output. So, and increases the, increases the importance of uh, more, more uh, words, uh, words that have uh, some weight, yeah? So that is, that is the, the importance, that is what it does. It's a mathematical, um, uh, it's actually a mathematical uh, formula looking at the frequency of specific terms appearing in either the document or uh, the corpus. Corpus is just a collection of several documents, okay? So we will need to initialize it and when we are importing it, uh, let me just scroll up. Uh, when you're importing it, I believe we imported it. Did I import it? If we did not, then we're going to have a problem. Nope, we did not import it. So we need to import um, a TF IDF. And this one is, where should I put it? Let me add a column here. Data pre-processing. So it would be from uh, sklearn dot feature extraction dot text import tf and it's case sensitive tf idf vector riser um, we have several we have uh, several that we can use uh, when you're using a pipeline um, today I'll just show you guys how to use tf idf uh, vectorizer, but we have other vectorizer, um, count vectorizer, and uh, when you're using count vectorizer within a pipeline, you need to use another one called TF IDF transformer. So those we will those will form our next session, and you'll get to understand each one of them much better. So for today, we are going to use uh, TF IDF vectorizer. Don't forget to run this cell because we've made a change to this cell. So once we make that change, it's going to be available. So if it is available, the next thing we need to do is to initialize, we need to initialize it as uh, for us guys to create an instance of, of the same uh, and we will use it in our, in our notebook. So initialize the term frequency. So we could call ours a sentiment TF idea equals to uh, TF idea vectorizer vectorizer yeah sorry vectorizer 
So um, we have sublinear, these are parameters you pass through. Sublinear TF equals to true. And then uh, this is the minimum uh, TF equals to five. No, you can, you could, uh, we have standard. When we'll be covering, uh, when we'll be covering um, uh, optimization and I'll probably mention them in the next class, the meaning and the importance of each of these. Yeah, uh, but you could rush ahead. Uh, you could also pick it as one of your assignments. Try and digest what parameters uh, TF, IDF, vectorizer, check, uh, which ones are default and what is the impact of changing. Play around with it. Today we are going to get a specific uh, set of results and we are going to get a specific uh, uh, accuracy. Once you play around with it, it would be interesting to hear some of your accuracy levels and uh, your confusion matrix as compared to what we'll, we'll do today. Uh, if you get uh, a, a good uh, good confusion matrix result report and uh, classification report as compared to this, it means you're, you're actually ahead of uh, me, which is a very, very good thing. So that is what I'm going to encourage. Some of these things I'm not going to tell you upfront, especially uh, I'll just pick random what what to what to mention and what not to mention, and then the rest. Since this this class is on a weekly basis, uh, in the in the course of the week, um, uh, the rest is for you to understand what what some of these things do. Um, that's how you will learn. So the normalization picked here is L two <coughs> penalizer, and then we choose encoding. Um, There are several parameters. Some of them are uh, so some of them are by default. So let me just, for the sake of typing, let me do this. I put that there. And then that encoding. Oh, sorry. I can I can I can really talk if I was somewhere near Kamakwa uh, Hotel Evi. Rico and question in the term of Jacobina. Am I Rico? My tongue is dry. No, can you have a magina again? Magilla, I go for brown bottle. You let you park in the clear. You know, my dear, you know, you're going to go in a little different. I miss Kunya gear brown, eh, Kwani. Nakutoa rangi. Mama. Okay. Tafadhali watu wazani mimi ni ule mbaya. Eh. Ah, hiyo ni hiyo ni uongo. Hiyo don't don't take that home my friend. Eric is such a good person. I'm not implying that those people who take brown bottles are bad people. No. Don't crucify me. I'm about to hear nani they no karibu na nichapa viboko. They no they no no offense taken please. <laughs> okay um so i think uh this is the command for initializing so, yes erico i assume you i assume you i don't worry don't worry i think it's zoom him in your core up uh try what that really job sasa so uh this cell initializes our tf idf so the take home for this cell is for you guys to try and understand what, parameter, what parameters TF, IDF takes, and what do they mean, and what is the impact of each? So uh, you're most likely to get into a circus or a, a circus or a continuation of analysis paralysis. you come up with, you will come across this term L2. L2 Google L2. That will happen. But when it happens, don't don't uh, don't go so much deeper. Let's just go step by step. These things will come clearer. So as long as you understand uh, what L two is, uh, the normalization for that has been picked. What what other ones are there apart from L two? Uh, what other encoding techniques are there apart from Latin one? Uh, n-gram range. What do they mean? And then stop words. Okay. When you understand that, I think um, you'll have created a good foundation for the next or subsequent sessions. So we run this session, we run this cell, sorry, uh, no error. And then the next thing is now, 
we already create our TF-IDF vectorizer. So I explained what TF-IDF is. And um, what I did not explain is what TF-IDF vectorizer does. So through this, we are going to create a vector. Remember, um, machine learning, uh, machines do not understand text. So we need to convert this text into a vector. And uh, <clears throat> a vector is basically um, a simple way to understand uh, a vector is a, a, a collection of, uh, okay, a matrix. A matrix is a collection of uh, several vectors. So for instance, uh, uh, I, had a, I have a whiteboard here, but I was not prepared to project it. I promise you in the next class, I will do that and I will explain how a vector is. Um, and uh, for now, let's look at it like it's a matrix. And this matrix, uh, let's think of it as a table, a table that has several rows and uh, several columns. So remember in our, uh, in our previous cells, we created tokens, yeah? So if all the, in our, in our table here, we assume that the columns are the tokens, yeah? Uh, the token. So if, if one document had the words that was quickly I go to, for example, this one, the one that I've highlighted, this is one token, this is another token, this is quick, this is another one, one, two, three, four, five, six. So what I've highlighted has six tokens. So let's assume that <clears throat> the matrix that we have is a table and the columns of those tables are the, are the columns in a document. Yeah. So we pick, um, uh, and it has to be unique tokens. So we merge all the tokens in a corpus. So uh, the, 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 the first document, these are the, to the tokens. The second document, these are the tokens, yeah? So the two documents here, if this was our entire data set, the two, doc the two documents here, they form our corpus. So what we'll do uh, to create a, 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 a matrix, we will make sure that first we have unique tokens from this document. And then we generate unique tokens from these documents, and then we combine the two. The resultant tokens creates our columns in our table. So when we have those columns in our tables of our token, now the rows of this table of ours becomes the index of those tokens. Uh, so it's like we are counting uh, the availability of this word in our document, in our corpus. How many times does uh, this word appear? How many times does this token appear? So that, that forms our matrix, yeah? So it's a collection of, um, so when you're looking at uh, the, the very, very first index of that table, like now the very, very first row of that table, the values in that row are the vector of that document. So in that vector, we see that uh, where we have blimey, we have this word, I don't know what it is. We have this, we have this. The values on that first row will have a value of one. But since it is joined with this one and Sierra does not belong on the first index, the value against it will be zero. And this, 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 this cell here also have, uh, does not have the word beautiful. So the corresponding value of that row will be zero. But when you go to the second row, we don't have this word on the second row, which is the second column, which is the second uh, document, yeah? So the value, uh, the, the, the corresponding value would be zero, but since we have beautiful in the second document, the corresponding value of that second row will be one. So that is how the, I'll, I'll explain it uh, from the whiteboard. It will make a lot of sense. Uh, uh, what I wanted to bring through is, for the first row, those values become the vector. But now a collection of those vectors, they form a matrix. Now, another term that we are, for, we are creating right now, we are actually uh, converting our text to vectors. We are converting our text to zeros and ones or zeros and uh, integers, yeah? So what that, what that does is uh, we are now moving to, uh, we are moving closer to start to, uh, make uh, to train our model because we've converted text to integers, right? So that is what TF-IDF vectorizer does, okay? That was a lot of uh, what I really, really hope that uh, 
we are getting somewhere, maybe not home, but if in case you're not home, please feel free to ask. I'll try and uh, explain. Now, we have our, we have our, we've initialized it. So what we want to do, we want to, we want to extract the features from this. Uh, we want to extract the features. We've already initialized it. We want to use that initialized um, TFIDF object to extract the features. Extracting the features is what I've just explained. One zero one zero one zero two 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 something like that. Okay. So the way to do that, we will take what we've initialized sentiment uh, TFIDF equals to uh, sentiment features. Sorry, sentiment TFIDF IDF features equals to sentiment sentiment df idf dot basically we are taking this what we initialized what we initialized and then we do a fit transform transform now what you're doing is we are fitting and we are transforming I'll explain what those those are <clears throat> df and our message uh, the content is the message yeah so it's taking um, this message in fact I need to use now clean the message sorry clean message yeah so um, uh, this is the cleaned message uh, this is this column here so fit transform we have two functions that are normally very important. Depending on uh, how you're using them, you can, uh, there are instances where you use uh, fit, there's instances where you use fit transform, there are instances where you use transform. Depending on how you, how, how you uh, what is the, the, the job ahead. So fit, what it means is, um, there is a statistical term calling, uh, called centering of data. So, this is more like just standardizing. Uh, a good example uh, is when you're using standard scalar. Um, I, would use, I would use the salary of people. I normally use the salary of people to explain standardizing. Uh, if you want to reduce the impact of a high earning person, let me say you have in the data set, someone have, uh, being paid 5 million, 5 million shillings and another person being paid 10,000 shillings. So, uh, you want to reduce the impact of that 5 million shillings to your prediction problem because uh, they, without uh, neutralizing that effect, uh, the, the algorithm would probably understand that you need to give so much weight to the salary. If it was a prediction related to the salary, then that is fine. But if it's not related to the salary, but you feel that that, uh, that column is important, you need it, then it's, it's good to standardize to neutralize that effect. Yeah, so that is a term called, that is an example of uh, situations where you're centralizing the, the data. It's a statistical term, yeah. Um, when you, when doing that, there's a method called uh, Z-score, uh, which is uh, a formula where you take, um, you take uh, the mean, you subtract from the data point, you divide by the standard deviation. So that is one way of standardizing, of, of standardizing that, um, that is one way of standardizing a, a collection of um, a data set, yeah? So the dot fit method is extracting, is a way of extracting those parameters that you're going to use, okay? So the parameters you're going to use when you're using a standard scalar would be, for, it, for instance, uh, the mean standard deviation, yeah? So the dot fit, extracts those and it stores them in a memory, yeah? Now, if you do transform, it uses those parameters to apply to the data so that you get the output. But when you do dot fit uh, underscore transform, you're combining the two processes. So that is what is happening. You're combining the two processes where um, after, after initializing the count vectorizer, um, after initializing the count vectorizer, uh, you apply to the, the clean data set. So when you apply that, you ext you're extracting the features. And in this case, the features are synonymous to the sparse matrix. Okay, 
Now, in the NLP, the reason why we call this the resultant uh, matrix as a sparse matrix is because uh, there are so many instances where you'll have several zeros. So a sparse matrix is a matrix that has a lot of zeros. When it has a uh, few zeros, it's called a dense matrix. Yeah. So for now, this is what we are um, creating. We are extracting those features. Once we extract those features, let's run this cell. Uh, no error, that is a good. Uh, no error. Um, then we go to sentiment features, sentiment DFIDF. Yes, we have the features. If you want to, you can actually now use the features. Um, uh, that one, let's extract. We can also extract the, that is the features. Something else we will need is the labels sentiment. Labels. So the labels are synonymous to the target variable, okay? Uh, so we will have features and we will have our, our target variable. So we are extracting our labels. Uh, the labels, we extract them from the original data set. Oops. And sentiment underscore ID. So this is what we had added earlier, sentiment ID. And it's what you're going to use our labels, but there is nothing, since this is uh, integer and this is also integer, there's nothing of, of preventing you from using this. But if this was uh, text, you can use uh, the same. Nothing is preventing you. And uh, encoding target variable is not normally mandatory uh, because that is what the predicted value is. So you can either want it uh, encode it or you can choose not to encode it. All right, uh, so we have that. We run that cell, no error. So we have our target variable and we have our features, yeah? Now, the, the, the next thing now to do, we are almost getting to, um, uh, to the, modeling uh, the modeling. So if you want to see the shape, <coughs> sorry, the shape of, the, uh, of our features, just run that. So we have, 39,894 uh, 39, rows, 8,807 columns, okay? Um, now we are ready. We can now initialize, we can now initialize uh, the algorithm. To initialize the algorithm, the one that we are going to use, initialize algorithm, we do, uh, Sentiment linear support vector classifier model is equals to linear RTBC. Okay, no error. So if this is the object that we're going to use. Now, once we've defined that, the next thing, now we have our data set. Our data set is a combination of uh, uh, the features that we've had and the, the labels that we have had. So, we need to split that data. So splitting, split the data set into, um, the reason I had explained earlier that uh, there is need for uh, splitting data set into train data and test data. And the way to split it, uh, we normally have X train. I'll explain after typing X test, Y train, Y test. Um, this, is, this one holds the indexes. If you want to make reference to the indexes, um, and you need to specify for both uh, uh, test and train, but it's not it's not necessary if you're not going to use the indexes. This is test. This one equals to we train test split for the sake of typing let me just move this to the next line now if you're wondering where this comes in this is a function we pass it as a function so if you're wondering where this uh, method comes in we had already imported it here um, in our library here it is 
So we are going to use that train test split to split our data set uh, just before we train, we run the train. And it also takes some parameters. The first parameters is the features. In this case, we're going to put sentiment. Uh, where, where, where are those features? These ones. Sentiment features, we do that. And then we also pass in uh, the labels. So if you have done a classifier before, you'll see that features are synonymous to the uh, X values, and then labels uh, is the Y value, which is the target variable. And then since we expect the output of indices for train, we also need to, to specify the index. We need to provide the index um, for uh, from the data frame. And then um, we need to split it. Let me go to the next slide. We need to provide uh, uh, test size. So this one is a value that takes, is it 30%, 70 or 80? So basically you're using from the data set, if we had 100 records, you, if you use 80 records for training and 20 records for testing, it means you've split that data into 80, 20. So in that case, you'll specify a value of 20 here. Yeah, the test size to be 20, so in, in percentage. So this is 20%, yeah. So, and there is one last thing called random state. This is just to freeze, uh, this is just to freeze uh, um, this split uh, so that it doesn't, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't change with time. So moving forward, these parameters are recognized as the condition within uh, the split was done. You can provide any, any data. All right, so um, because I had moved it to the next line, it won't work until I move this up, okay? So if you look at that, that is what we have. Let's run this and see if we'll get an error. No error? Okay, now we've split our data. Now what we need to do is to train. Train the data. And to train the data, we need to pick the model that we created. This model, we initialized it. We've initialized that model, and to train it, we put the fit. Yeah? So we are training it, so the model is getting it to understand some properties from this data that we are putting to it. And the, the data that we are putting to it is X train, Y train. All right? So let's run that cell. Uh, it has uh, trained. This process is some uh, times they are slow because of uh, of uh, the speed. So I encourage you to run this because it might take longer. And you, if you are able to run this on your laptop, it means your laptop is good and uh, you can continue. But if it's taking longer, it could even freeze. It means maybe your processing power for the laptop is not as good. Yeah. Okay, uh, so we've trained the, uh, our model and the model understands the data. Now what we want to do is to predict. Let's, um, let's store all the predicted values in a variable called ypred. And the way to do the prediction, pick the model that we created and use the, call, the method called predict and pass the test values. So you see, uh, in our split, we had put uh, we had put the test values, we had uh, extracted the test values. So this function here, it returns this value. It will return which 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 rows are to be used for training, which rows are for to be used for testing, and which rows are for are to be used for uh, uh, the train as target variables and which rows are to be used for test as target variables, uh, corresponding indexes as well, all right? So when you're doing prediction, you only predict on the tests because you use the train to do the training. So we are, we are doing prediction on the test, okay? Now, if you want to see uh, the values, the predicted value, you just run that command, ypred, you'll see the predicted value, yeah? So uh, out of those numbers, uh, but because this is text, this is text, um, it's not as straightforward. This is, uh, this could be the first index, yeah? It won't make sense. This is uh, positive, 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 negative, uh, sorry, negative, 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 positive, yeah? 
Uh, the next thing we want to do uh, is the classification reports. Now, the classification reports, this is how you generate a classification report. Classification report. Y test, those are the test values. You compare them with predicted values. So classification report is just out of the predicted value, because the values that were predicted, we used the test data. So out of the predicted values, which ones were correct? What is the level of, um, how can we measure the performance of our model? So we expose, uh, we, 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 it's like comparing the predicted value to the actual values in the test data set, yeah? So when we run that, oops, classification report, and we have an error, and what is that error? Um, why pred is not defined? Oh, okay, why pred, this one. There you go. So classification report, that is what you have, yeah? We have precision, we have recall, and F1 score. I'm going to give, uh, I'm going to give uh, an English understanding of what these terms are, but there is a mathematical understanding of what they are. I'm going to leave that for you guys to do as your third assignment. So you need to understand the, the mathematical calculation. I'll just give you hints. Um, the English understanding is precision, is how good your model is at predicting a specific class. So in this case, um, your model is good 67% in predicting this class, and the class is uh, negative. And in this one is saying, your model is 62% good in predicting positives. Yeah, so when it comes to positive, it is uh, performing better than predicting um, negatives. One reason could be, let's look at, uh, let's look at, uh, which one is negative? Zero. Yes, zero is negative. So uh, uh, predicting positive, the model is not as good as predicting negatives, all right? And that is uh, what precision means. Uh, how good is your model in, in predicting a given, uh, a given class? Recall in English, uh, what this means is that prediction that has been done, how reliable or confident are you that it can, it can be depended, you can actually depend on it. Um, this one is, it is 73% reliable, this prediction. Like now, it is confident that this prediction is, um, the level of confidence of this prediction is 73%. That is in English, okay? Uh, but this one, you see the level of confidence is 56. So it is not as confident when predicting positive as it is confident when predicting negative. So it could be that the negative uh, uh, sentiments have some very, very negative termino terms that it's just outrightly negative. But positive, a statement like, uh, I'm going to Nairobi CBD. As that one, it's a bit, it's neither negative or positive. Uh, you could be going to Nairobi CBD because you're, you're just bored or, but it's not, it, it cannot be captured from the statement. So this recall, it's poor when uh, the confidence is, is poor, may, maybe because of it has observed such sentences in the data set. So it's not as confident. It could, it could not be positive, but it, uh, it, uh, it has flagged it as positive, all right? Now, the last one is F1 score. Uh, F1 score is, uh, uh, harmonic mean. It's an harmonic mean between the two, yeah? So the way you can get a mean of uh, values, uh, there is a, uh, harmonic mean is just a scientific mean. Uh, use, again, um, a formula that you use to determine um, the average, quote unquote, of a certain set of uh, values. So it looks at precision, it looks at recall, and strikes a balance. So the most important score is normally a F1 score, yeah? And uh, it, it, you, can, you, can, uh, you can explain your, 
your results using a phone score as the you can tell a group of people my 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 classification report has an F1 score of this when, uh, when predicting uh, positives and an F1 score of this when predicting negatives, yeah? And this is the average. So if you look at uh, uh, the classification report, that is what it is, yeah? Okay, so the support is the data that was used. Uh, total was 20, and out of those ones, nine were used to determine uh, one and, uh, 11 were used to, because it does sample, it does sample, <clears throat> all right. Um, the next, the next, the next uh, metric would be, uh, how do we check accuracy? Okay, accuracy is not as good, and I will explain why accuracy score is not as good. Um, why tests, why pred? Ah, again, I have, I think I'm used to doing that. So accuracy score is 65, yeah? So 65%, the reason why accuracy score is not uh, a good measure, it doesn't give you some information, some elements. So you could, you could get an accuracy score of say 90% uh, and your, your data set is not balanced. Meaning your model is just good in predicting um, a specific class, yeah? So it's hidden, it's, it's hiding um, some information that could be important. Uh, if we had a problem of say fraud, or even not fraud, uh, cancer detection, and uh, you sampled uh, a thousand uh, patients, and uh, 990 of them were negative, and then uh, 10 of them were positive. So if you had, uh, say, um, 99, okay, for the sake of calculation, let's speak, you sampled 100 patients. 95 of them turned out to be negative, and then 5% turned out to be positive. Accuracy score of uh, 95% would, would probably give someone an indication that the model is really good. But in essence, that model would be predicting only the positive cases, the negative cases. But a good model for cancer detection should be able to detect with a lot of confidence uh, a negative patient, yeah? So accuracy score uh, does not tell us that. And that is why it is not relied upon. Uh, you need some more, uh, a better way to understand your metrics. And a classification report helps you understand the performance of your model are uh, much, much better than an accuracy score. Uh, checking accuracy, All right? And then um, the, the last one before we start testing uh, would be the confusion matrix. Let's add confusion matrix. So the confusion matrix, uh, we create a data frame, the data frame. And then we use the confusion, confusion matrix method. This confusion matrix, we used it here. Uh, we imported it here. Um, hmm, yeah, confusion matrix. Yeah. This confusion matrix, as, as, uh, as per the previous metrics, we pass in the tests and the predicted values. Okay, so uh, based on this, we, uh, we've got our results. So uh, uh, we have the columns and we have the rows. If we check the columns to mean the actual, and the rows to mean the predicted, then it would then mean that uh, a total of 12, a total of 12, let's look at the first column, eight and four. A total of 12 uh, tests were done. Eight were correctly uh, predicted as positive, zero being positive. And then four, yeah, were incorrectly classified as negative, yet they were positive. So the actual values here, all these 12 are actual values, yeah? These 12 were actual values, but eight were correctly predicted as positive, 
four were wrongly predicted as um, as uh, negative, okay? And yet they were positive, okay? The confusion matrix is to confuse you. Uh, when you go to the second column, uh, one, but with time it will not confuse you, don't worry. When you get to the next column, a total of eight, a total of eight uh, negative uh, predictions were done. Three were predicted as positive and yet they were negative. Uh, five were predicted as, as, uh, as negative and yet they were negative. So this is true. That makes uh, our correct predictions to be eight and five. The ones that were wrongly predicted are four and three. That is a confusion matrix. Now it tells you, it tells you the extent in which uh, your predictions can be relied upon. Okay, so confusion matrix and classification reports give you a more detailed uh, report on the performance of your model. So the objective is normally to have a zero here and to have a zero here, and the numbers on this side to be as big as possible. All right. So we have our we have our classification report, we have our confusion matrix. How do we make tests? So for us guys to make tests, uh, each one of us, uh, we are going to make, you're going to give me statements. I'm going to type the statements and we see those statements, whether our model will be able to get it right or wrong, okay? So, testing our model. So let's put uh, this in a list, message equals to, you're going to put a message in a list. This is where I'm going to type. This is where I am going to type all your messages, or rather each of your messages. Each of your messages, okay? Now, as we, let's, let's try and make a prediction of this text string. But before you do that, since we had uh, we had uh, uh, we we used uh, TFIDF, yeah. Uh, we used TFIDF this one to do our uh, to fit transform. Fit transform is when you're when you're when you're training the data, yeah. So when you're testing, when you're using the test data set, that TFIDF has already gotten the parameters to use. So what we do is we just transform. So in this case, we will use uh, sentiment uh, TFIDF. Yeah, we'll first use, uh, we'll need to transform this message. Uh, we'll need to transform this message um, before we do uh, transform, transform message before we do the predictions. So let's say transformed, transformed, message is equals to, we will use that, the TFIDF, and call the method transform, yeah? And then pass our test message, yeah? So transform is like applying the parameters that was extracted when training to the test message, and then we do the, uh, the predictions, okay? All right, so after that, now we want to do predicted sentiment. We give it to, we now pick the model that we generated and the model that we generated is this one, okay? We use that model that we generated to do the prediction. Predict, but what you're going to predict is the transformed message, we've already transformed it. It's no longer text string. It's no longer a text string, but uh, a vector. Yeah, it's a vector. Yeah, so what we do here, we run that, no error. Then let's see the predicted value. Print, uh, print, 
contradicted statement. The predicted value, remember it's returning a, uh, a list. If you had a multi, a multi-label uh, classification where the target variable could be many, in this case the target variable is one, then you would have all those values in a list. But this one will give you, what if you wanted a single value, the exact one value here? And that is why I, um, I split it into, um, there is this mappings. That is why, that was the reason why I, I encoded to get this mapping so that I'm able to extract the specific, the specific prediction, the one. You don't want the, you don't want the brackets to, for, for the return value to be um, a list or you don't want the bracket, bracket, sorry. So if you want that print, you get the mappings and then you use the, the, the method called tech. And then you make, you pass the predicted sentiment. Yeah. If it was a list, let's see, let's see uh, what this would return. Yes, exactly. So uh, it's, it's returning an index of a list. If it was a list that you want, the specific now, this is an array. Um, so if you want uh, the first value, you specify zero. There you go. So you have a specific prediction. And according to this prediction, it is a positive sentiment. And that marks the end of our classifier. Uh, in, the, in subsequent classes, uh, in the next class, I'll probably uh, explain those things that I've given you guys as an assignment. And I'll also uh, do the same uh, problem using a pipeline, explain some of the, um, the benefits of using uh, a pipeline as compared to um, not using a pipeline. And uh, I'll also explain to you how we can uh, package this model into a pickle file and uh, use the, the packaged model to do predictions. So this packaged model in subsequent classes would mean we, could, we are able to host it somewhere and expose it using a, something called a REST API and people can actually use it um, to do their own prediction. So in the event of a sentiment analysis, um, uh, for whatever reason, if someone wanted a sentiment analysis uh, um, classifier, you build this, uh, protect it using username and password, uh, or even tokens, and give them an API where they can log in, and their CRM could always, just before a customer care agent does uh, their work, uh, the message passes through their prediction model and then it's, it's returned back. So if it's sentiment analysis, you provide them a, a dashboard within which they can analyze their own sentiment analysis. Those are now like now production uh, systems. Uh, you actually build a system that can be used by anyone in this country. Yeah. So those are some of the things that we will cover in subsequent classes. Um, uh, what we've done today marks the end of uh, our class today. And uh, yeah, I, I think we need to do a couple of tests. Uh, before we go to test, I want to ask, does anyone have a question or clarification or any feedback before we do the tests? Uh, let me use the list one by one so that it's not random. I'll start with the top and the top is Carol. Carol Fungaro. Mm, I bumped into some error, but I will uh, replay the once you share the the, the, the recording, um, huh? recording. Yes. Oh, okay. What uh, what error was that? Yeah. Which it was cell? that uh, fit. You know, uh, the the error was solving fast, uh, kind of, uh, when I, I was trying to solve it, I got a bit disconnected. Oh, okay, okay. So I've not been able to follow through the, okay. in the coding, but uh, yeah, 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 but I will, I will make uh, sure yeah. that I replay. All right, no problem. So when you replay yeah. in case it persists, you can reach out. Mm. Yes, of course. All right. Uh, Dan, I noticed you joined uh, late. Tumesha kula nyama, imebaki supu. Tukupatia ugali na supu kule. Next time ukuja ukule nyama pia. Ebu fungwaro.
Dani uko? Uluma. Okay. Tongelelea nyama ndio anakula. <laughs> okay, wacha wacha sherekee nyama. Alaga mingia late. Anakula it's supper time almost. Okay. Now that tuko na wewe Eric, hebu fungua roho. Asi kuna D, kuna another D bado inaendelea. Daudi. Oh, kwa hivyo niendelee, sawa. Devi, Devi, Devi Mombani. Eric amesema si yeye. Tuko kwako. No, 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 no. Pana kwangu leo. Eh, uko poa? Ya. Okay, sawa. Um, Efantas you joined us when we had already started. Uh, I joined a bit late. Huh? Yes, yes. Uh, but I think this, is, this, is, this was my first class, and I just wanted to have a feel of what you guys are doing. Uh, and I'm seeing you are quite, quite some steps ahead of uh, what I can catch. Maybe I'll try to do catch ups. Okay, no problem. Um, I'm going to share the, both the notebooks and uh, the recording um, and share yes. so that uh, guys who joined late and the guys who are not able to join this meeting can actually have their own time to go through. So, so on. Okay. Karibu sana, Ifantas. Um, uh, Ibrahim Abdi. Yes, Nikoiria. Thanks. Thanks for the session. I think I also joined a little bit late. Yeah. But yeah, go through the, the notebook. And uh, yeah, thanks for the session. Okay, karibu sana. So, Josephine, uh, nilikupoteza ama uli manage mpaka muisho? Uh, at some point, I think I went a bit faster. Um, so you were okay, but the network was an issue. And also, I found an error. I've shared it on the chat. Can you kindly assist? Because from there, I just typed in the cells. I didn't run any after ah, that. Ah, so. okay, okay. All right. It's so, been, so when, you're, when you're training? Yeah, training the data. Okay, all right. I'll need to check uh, your previous uh, 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 notebooks. What I'll propose is... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, after the recording, just go and retrace the, the steps. Try and figure okay. out by yourself. If you're stuck, you reach yeah. out. Um, you reach out. Sawa, sawa. Sawa? Yes, sawa, no problem. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Uh, Deno, tuko kwako. Sawa, session from and uh, you had a question earlier on. Eh? I don't know if it was addressed. I think it was on uh, the ones and zeros, what they meant. Yeah, I know what the question was. Whatever you do it, whatever you do it, whatever you do it, machine learning. Iliko kwa data set. Iliko kwa data set. Hizo values iko kwa data set hivyo. Ndine uki uki sasa baada ya hivi basi tuse do band then kuweka kwa I'm struggling to hear you and I think you've even dropped. Um you could reach out uh, I could explain to you either through chat or uh, reach out directly to me. Eriko, we are finally on, on you. Oh, neither ni mulia mwa kuniacha. Yeah, the session was awesome. I'm waiting for the, what have you called it? Pink, pink, pink it starts with a P. Pickle. Or something. Pickling, yes. Oh, pickling. Okay, okay, okay. So All that's right. the part I'm waiting to also see and... Uh, also, I want to test this uh, model so far where we are. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think actually it's been it's been awesome. Uh, hopefully, as you you will share the notebook, so that I can also do like a test or as well go through it as well. I okay. think I'm, I joined late and there are some few things I missed. Okay. Okay. Cool. 
All right. So um, who can give me a, a statement? I type this, uh, and then uh, we see the output. I just want to type this. Eriko, give me one, one message. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, give me any, I, I don't know. I don't know what, no, what you're, you're talking about. Talking about, okay. You are, not you are. I don't know what you're, you are. Yes. <laughs> Wait, Kizungu, you were lost. Bana. Ivio. Yes. That, that's correct. Yes, okay. that's correct. Kuna kuhana typo. Okay, let's, let's use that. So the next thing we do is to transform. After transforming, we do the prediction. And then it has predicted it is a negative. There, yeah, zero. So you guys can play around with this. You can put as many messages. And if you find it's uh, misfiring, for example, I am not so happy, but I am glad I attended this session. An exclamation mark. Let's see what that one will tell us. It has said um, positive, you yeah. see? So the question would then be, is there anyone who can optimize this and uh, or rather can we move to a level where we train this sentiment analysis that would probably change uh, the sentiment from positive to negative? I am not so happy, but I am glad I attended this session. So this guy is probably not happy. The only thing he's happy about is attending the session. So can, can we have a model that actually picks a different uh, and what would be uh, t picks a different value or a different prediction and what would be the classification report and what would be the uh, classif classification report and what would be the confusion matrix, meaning the, uh, how strong would that be? Remember our positive prediction, it has predicted positive, but the recall for our model is 56. If you look at the F1 score for our model is 59. Uh, to some level, this is, this this is, might not be acceptable to uh, any organization, um, maybe 70 or even 80, okay? So can we, can we improve on this model to the level where such a prediction changes and uh, it changes because this changed and this changed because we did one or two things up here, okay? So that forms our class for today. Uh, everything will be uh, shared on the WhatsApp group. And uh, I really hope that this session will be recording as I proceed. Otherwise, you guys will kill me. You know, we've had uh, previous sessions that I, I thought I was recording only to realize that there was no recording. Okay, you guys don't, don't, don't worry. It was actually recording. All right, uh, is there any question? Let me go through the, the, the chat. Um, some questions. Uh, Dan is asking if there's an alternative to pickling. Uh, so far, I've only worked with pickling. I'm not so sure if there is any other alternative besides pickling. Uh, but I'm so sure maybe one of us might come across something and we could explore. I've been doing uh, pickle files and deploying them to production. If anyone has a, a different one, please uh, share with us. We might want to explore it. Um, Josephine and Asabe Mekata, Josephine, don't worry. Uh, this will be shared and then we can, you can retrace your steps. Ukikwama, reach out. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try and uh, give you answers at, uh, when I get the, the, the opportunity to do that. Uh, Eriko has shared with you a proposed solution. Uh, unexpected keyword. Okay, this is still discussion on Josephine's uh, issue. Uh, still that, okay. All right, so I think there is no other question. Uh, the, chat, the chat messages are all covered. Uh, my personal feedback is today has been really, really good. 
because the main reason I say that it's because uh, some solutions did not come from me. It came from you guys, and uh, that is how I would want it. Um, I don't have all the answers. Uh, you guys uh, could come across, and the more we share, the better, and the more you learn. So learn, uh, a colleague of yours would get stuck, and if you share answers like the way I'm seeing in, in chat, um, it's really, really beneficial. So that is what I would encourage, and that's why I say today has been such a successful day, and let's uh, continue that way. So unless there's no nothing more, I call it uh, a night or an evening or a session. Until next time, um, on Saturday, I'll be I'll be showcasing um, some of the work I've done on uh, on one of the forums I've been invited. I've been invited. I'll share the details again on the WhatsApp group. I've been invited to Nairobi Women in Machine Learning and Data Science to showcase a project on NLP. I'll, uh, and the project I picked was uh, uh, language prediction. So more or less uh, similar steps that we've covered today. Uh, but the difference is I've used uh, pipelines and I've uh, pickled that and I've pickled it and I'll probably deploy it to production and showcase uh, the way we are doing it, testing that platform, not from Jupyter Notebook, but from uh, our website. So we we'll log into our website and use that and uh, the API could be accessible to anyone who has an account in that website. Uh, so you use your account details to hit the API. So the plan is moving forward is for, 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 to build uh, several models and optimize them and make these models available through an API. And anyone, any developer sitting anywhere who wants to, to use some machine learning uh, they can use them uh, to deploy their applications, whatever applications they want, right? So on Saturdays, I'm inviting you all for that function. Until next time, goodbye and stay safe. Thank you. Thank Cheers, you. Guys. Cheers. Bye. I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow is Thursday. Yeah. See you in the Saturday. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> tomorrow is not Saturday. No, tomorrow is Thursday. Saturday, Thursday we have a class. Yeah, cohort one. In, I mean, sorry, no, in get one. Okay, okay. We'll take that offline. Actually, I had no idea. But maybe I, I just need to refresh my mind. Thanks. All right, bye.